Hello and welcome to this tutorial about understanding and using the vector scope in Premiere Pro. Now Premiere Pro has got a whole series of scopes that are available with pretty much any window that you use. So we've got the source monitor and that's got scopes, we've got the program monitor and that's got scopes, we've got the reference monitor and that's got scopes. How do we find our scopes? They're always here in this little drop down here where it says output. You click on the output drop down and you've got a whole series of different scopes. You've got an all scopes button which shows all the various different scopes. But the one that we're particularly interested in today is the vector scope. If we click on the word vector scope, that is a vector scope. What is a vector scope? <laughs> well, the vector scope gives us a graphical representation of the color or the chrominance inside our footage. It's not looking at the luminance particularly, it's looking at the chrominance, how intense the colors are. And Premiere Pro works on a system that says 75% of maximum color value is the maximum broadcastable. So if you go above 75% of maximum chrominance, you're going to go into the illegal colors, the non-broadcast safe environment. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to create a title. So if I go to title, new title, default still, and we can call this whatever we want, that's fine, title 02, click OK and we're going to click on the text tab and we're going to click and we're going to just do test text and let's just select that I'm going to make the font a lot bigger so just click the font and make it a lot larger and I'm going to choose a uh, I'm going to make this Arial so A-R-I Arial yeah that's what we want turn okay so we've got nice big Arial text basic stuff make it a little bit bigger and then I'm going to shift it across now I'm just going to select all the text and I'm going to change its color by going down to the fill type color and I'm going to click on the fill and you'll see here that we can choose the color now notice we've got all these values here for saturation and for brightness and for hue now at the moment the hue is red if I take this little circle and I drag it all the way down to the end here firstly I get a warning sign if you hang over that it says makes the color broadcast safe so if you have this yellow triangle with an exclamation mark in the middle it's already warning you that the color you've chosen is non broadcast safe but notice that I've got its saturation right up at 100% and I've taken red to the maximum value it will go 255 so I have gone to 100% of its chrominance its color value which is already telling me it's non-broadcast safe but we'll use it just for demonstration purposes so I click OK there's my text now we can close the text box and we can drag our title in above the footage and let's go to the footage and there we have our test text now if I want to look at a vector scope representation of this image as well as seeing the image itself what I really need to do is open up the reference monitor now the reference monitor has got under the windows menu go windows reference monitor and it's a floating window and I'm going to leave it as a floating window and just put it next to the actual text that we're looking at and I might just make it a tiny bit bigger so we can see it a little bit more clearly there you go now this is a graphical representation of the image that we can see if I was to turn off the video image underneath you'll see that all I end up with is this straight line going right out to the edge of the circle now how am I supposed to understand this circle you need to think of this circle as if it is a color wheel now we have color wheels in Premiere Pro when we do fast color correction so if I move this to one side I select my footage here and I go to my effects I type the word fast fast color corrector just drop it on that image and go to my effects controls and open it all up there is the color wheel now we need to think of the vector scope in the same way as a color wheel there is red there is red there is blue there is blue so all the way around this circle is represented by the same colors as you would go all the way around this circle so we've got a hundred percent red on this particular one there's our vector scope demonstrating to us that the color is a hundred percent red and the intensity of the color is always represented by the distance that it is from the center point grays neutral grays black and whites are going to be spots in the middle because they've got no color to them but when we've got this red we can see that it's a very very powerful red because it's shooting straight off the edge there this is maximum that can go to it's a hundred percent color which is far beyond broadcast safe so it's like a color wheel and it tells us about the intensity of the colors 
Now there's a couple of bits and pieces up the top here. One says intensity. That's not to do with the colours, that's just by how intense this image is going to appear. So you can take it up to 100% and it just makes the lines and the images inside the vector scope more intense, but it doesn't actually have any editing effect. It generally comes at 50%, which is where you should leave it, unless you find that you can't see something clearly or something's overpowering, in which case you can take it down to 0 or 100. This of drop down here is telling us that the outside targets here, these outside targets, are representing the 75% or the safe legal broadcast limits for your colours. If, as is with this example, your lines or your, your vector scope goes beyond this target, it is beyond safe limits. But if it does go beyond this target, then it's very wise to actually drop this drop down and go to 100% and then you can see the full range of the colour. And if you sometimes have a graph that goes right to the edge and you are unsure if there is more beyond it, drop down to 100% so you can see if anything has been hidden outside that you couldn't see before. If you've gone to 100%, then the outer box represents 100% and the inner box now represents 75%. Whereas if you're at 75%, then it is the outer box that you are aiming to reach at 75%. So it's very important that you pay attention to this little drop down here because you could be colour correcting for 75% when you've actually got the drop down at 100 and you're setting everything up here and you've got these blown out images that are completely unusable. But at the same time, if you've got something that's close to the edge and you want to see its full extent, then it's always worth clicking the 100% just to see how far it goes. I'm going to go back to 75%. So I could not use this colour in a broadcast environment. I would need to change its saturation, which would mean that I'd double click on the title to open the titler, select all the text, go back to my fill colour and take it back to where it's going to be about right. So I've still got it there at 191, there it's gone back at 176, 178, it appears to be safe so if I click OK on that and X off my titler go back to my vector scope, you can see at 75% it has brought it down to safe limits. Now there is one minor restriction with the vector scope in Premiere Pro in that it is calibrated for NTSC. However, having checked it out with the slightly more powerful options that you have in After Effects, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. It's a great rule of thumb. Don't go above the center of this target and if anything stay just below the middle of this center square and you know you will be in safe environments. Right. Now, I'm going to turn off the test text, and I'm going to turn on my video so we can clearly see the video. So this vector scope is looking at this image here. It's in the reference monitor, which is ganged, that's what this button is, to the program monitor. So if I make any changes to this particular piece of footage, it will be reflected in the vector scope. So if I choose my footage, and I actually go down again to my fast color corrector and drop it on the footage, just going to move this out the way to open up my fast color corrector and I'm now going to fool around or move around the color wheel and if I start moving it out can you see the way the vector scope starts to move around as I go to the various different images I'm putting it down to blue so the whole image is going down towards the blues you can see that I am actually moving the image around quite significantly by playing with the color wheel and obviously I have the gain control which can just blow it out beyond vision I need to go to 100% to even see where that is. There it is, right at the top as just one line because the whole thing's been blown out to this unusable level at 100%. Right, so I'm taking it back to its normal, I'll take it back to 75% and you can see that that actually is just the right side of broadcast safe. And we're pulling it down with this gain control in the middle and also the intensity here. So that's how I can use the fast color corrector just to change it and I can see those changes graphically as well as actually seeing them on the actual footage itself by having these two monitors open. Right, now there is one other thing that I sometimes need to do with footage like this. What I want to do, in fact I'm just going to gang this down to the bottom here so it's just to the side of my timeline, which is just here, and uh, give myself a slightly bigger view. There we go, the two are side by side. Right. Sometimes what I want to do is just look at the skin tone of a piece of footage so that I can colour correct for the skin tone of the person I'm looking at. However, this image is showing me everything that's inside this image. 
So the vector scope is looking at all of the colours and giving me this sort of lump, whereas I want to look at specific colours, say in her cheek here. How do I look at that? Well, I need to apply an effect to be able to isolate that area. And what I do is I X off any effect that I've presently got showing, and I'm going to just choose the 4, F-O-U-R, and I end up with the 4-point garbage mat. And I click and drag and drop it onto the footage, and then I'm just going to shut the fast color corrector for the moment. I've got my four point garbage mat. Click on the word and you actually end up with these four points that you can pull in, if you can grab hold of them, and create an isolated area. I'm going to pull these in so that I can just see her cheek. And if you notice, the vector scope at the bottom is reducing what it sees. So I now know, looking at this image above, that I'm just looking at skin, and the image below, the vector scope, is showing me how close that skin is to this line here. Now this line is referred to often as the skin tone line. And the closer you can have the colour of your skin tones matching this line, the more accurate it will be. And it's simply because the colour of blood pumping through skin, any colour skin, black, yellow, pink, whatever colour, the colour of blood is pretty much exactly on this line. So if you colour correct this image so that this is pretty much on this line, then you're going to be very close to skin tone lines. But it's not always as simple as you might think. So if I open up the fast colour corrector and I start doing a little bit of change to try and move it closer to that line, you have to be very careful. I've moved it onto that line, but watch what happens if I pull it out. I keep on the line, but I've increased the intensity. Or if I pull it back, I'm keeping on the line and I'm reducing the intensity. I can actually go exactly the opposite direction and still stay on that line. So you do need to be very careful that you pretty much keep it at the same level in intensity. And then if I turn off my four-point garbage mat, I can actually look and see, well, I know the colours are right. The rest of the images still need some work, to be honest but we know that we're a lot closer with our skin tones. And that's how you can use a 4-point garbage mat, an 8-point garbage mat, or a 16-point garbage mat to isolate particular areas and actually check out the colour. And I'm going to do this with one other piece of footage. I've got this one here saying Finding Teapot. Click on Finding Teapot, my current time indicator on it, and I'm going to move off to where they find the teapot in the box, which is there. Now have a look at the vector scope. As they start to pull the teapot out, have you noticed that my reds have started to go way beyond my broadcast safe limits? I can turn up the intensity to see how much it is if I want. And if I start to go to this level, then I'm always tempted to go to 100% to see how far above it is. And it's quite significantly above. Go back to 75. Now, what I could do is I could apply, again, the four-point garbage mat to this particular piece of footage. And I could pull in my four points and I can actually look precisely at that teapot to make sure that it is the teapot that is the offending article and not something else that I have missed. And you can clearly see from that the teapot is exactly the thing that's causing the problems. So I just turn off the effect then to show the whole image. So I've identified that there's a real problem with this red and I need to address that problem and that's when I would use secondary colour correction which I've shown you in another tutorial. So the vector scope is giving me very valuable information about how oversaturated the chrominance might be, about changes that I must take to make sure that it remains within broadcast safe limits. One final thing to show you. At the bottom of the project panel you have the new items icon. Click on that and go down to bars and tones. And then it says do you want it to be the same size as your settings that we do. Click OK. And then I'm just going to grab it and uh, I'm in CS5 so I can grab it and drop it in this new items icon here to create a new sequence and just expand my sequence and have a look at that. Now I just want you to have a very quick look at the vector scope. Bear in mind I've got whites and blacks and I've got all kinds of colours. These bars are 75% intensity and if you look at the vector scope you will see there are dots in each of these boxes showing what the 75% levels are. And this is a way of calibrating your vector scope. And so color bars are something that you can put on the front of an export to help the person who's going to use it to be able to calibrate their system because you've given them precisely 75% intensity bars and you know from your vector scope that they're bang on. Well, that's the vector scope. That's how to use it. That's also how to create a region of interest so you can work out exactly what's causing you a problem and identify areas of difficulty 
and then move ahead to the next stage which would be either primary or secondary color correction. One final thing to say I guess is that use the vector scope because it's better than your eyes. Your eyes lie and this is a graphical representation of any footage. I'll go back to this other one here. It's a very good graphical representation of what's going on and your eyes can sometimes lie particularly when they get tired but graphs don't. The graphs will always show you clearly what's going on and you can rely on that information to make good decisions. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Thank you.